live from the Congress Center in London, England. It's The Cube at MIT and the Digital Economy, the second machine age. Brought to you by headline sponsor, MIT. Welcome back to London, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. Dean Dave Schmidtlein is here. He's the uh, MIT Sloan School Management, the Dean of the School. Dean, w welcome to theCUBE. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So, MIT IDE, we're here in London. How's London treating you so far? Uh, I, you know, uh, from Boston, we come to London for the spring weather. <laughs> so yeah. It's fantastic. How about that, here. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, one is gloomy and cold, and the other one's London. Yes. You know, so. <laughs> so, tell us about the initiative on the digital economy. Yes. Why IDE? Why now? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Moore's Law, changes in information technology, um, that's a 20-year story. So it's a fair question to ask what's new now. And it's a qualitative change in what business opportunity looks like. It's a qualitative change in what products and services look like as they're being designed. Um, this is not just the next stage, it's a new stage. And uh, I, I think... Uh, some of your viewers have been seeing and hearing some of that, so I don't want to cover uh, or recover that ground too much, but um, the, um, you know, if the first machine age was about replacing muscles, the second machine age is really about replacing minds. And so um, what that means is very different in terms of opportunities for individuals and for companies. Yeah, of course we're here, I said earlier, we're here at the, the site of the first machine age, really, which yes. <laughs> was the steam engine, right? Yes. And now we're launching the second machine age, and it's, it's uh, apropos, I think, to be here. Um, where does IDE yeah. fit in with the broader agenda of the Sloan School? Yeah, so, you know, uh, the Sloan School is MIT's School of Management, and we want to be MIT's School of Management, not just another B school teaching MBA students and so on. What are the themes that are central to that? It's um, understanding complex systems, uh, doing deep analysis, um, innovation and entrepreneurship, and I would tell you, by the way, that modern finance was invented at MIT, not in Chicago or Philadelphia. And so the themes for the school are around innovation, entrepreneurship, analysis, and complex systems, and finance. And this fits right in the center of all of that. So uh, it's very important to us. Um, it fits with our history. It fits with our connectedness across the rest of MIT. We're not just a standalone business school, but we draw on the rest of MIT very, very significantly. Okay, so it's very relevant to the broader M MIT agenda, and we were talking off camera how we've done a number of, of MIT events, the chief data officer or the, di the, the data quality event, yes. and, and, and always such a focus on, on the alumni. Um, yeah. You've got such a broad network. I wonder if you could talk yes. about that a little bit and, and how it relates. Yeah. Uh, so we have an amazing alumni network. Not everybody knows that. Um, it's not the biggest network in the world, but when we put together the way that we reach out to MIT's alumni network, it's 125,000 people around the world. Those are people who are, um, uh, you know, yes, some of them scientists and engineers, but at this point in their career, they're driving innovation in major companies. And so uh, the network that I serve as dean is largely the MIT network, not only the business school network. But we have an amazing network here in London, um, you know, just all over the world. And people who are so incredibly proud to be associated with MIT, um, a, a place where new ideas are born all the time. So you've taken this second machine age message around the world. We're here in London, you guys are in Sao Paulo, I think uh, last yes. year and other you know, venues planned. How do you yes. decide sort of where to go and what does London mean? Yes, uh, well, uh, London is um, a centerpiece in so many ways. You talked about the first machine age and uh, the commitment here in London as well to innovation and entrepreneurship is very strong. Um, one of our faculty members, Fiona Murray, is advising David Cameron uh, with respect to entrepreneurship policy here in the United Kingdom. Um, London is seen as such a global center, not only for finance, but also for new business activity. And so um, it's quite natural to, to, to be here in London. Um, uh, you, you certainly would wonder <laughs> why we went anywhere before coming to London. <laughs> There's also a, a, a historical role for education and knowledge creation that is very special in the United Kingdom. And um, we at MIT have been deeply engaged with uh, the UK in that regard also. So mm -hmm. just 
great to be here. And they, they like complex problems over here, yeah. as we know. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if I ask you a little bit of personal question from your job. Second Machine Aid talks about a lot of disruptions and how technology is creating its huge opportunities, but huge challenges. In yeah. an age of MOOCs and people saying, you know, I mean, everything needs to be removed from government and education. Yes. You know, as Dean, what have you been seeing? You know, how is it kind of business, uh, the, the, yes. the business that you're in changing yes. uh, and, and, and how's it going to look over the next couple of years? Yeah, you know, honestly, it's a great question and uh, I, I'm asked that quite often. Um, I would give the um, schools, uh, you know, a high grade with respect to curriculum, with respect to understanding or helping our students understand this, but with respect to using the technologies, using um, the digital world ourselves, you know, maybe a passing grade on a good day, that's about it. There are some things that we do that I'm very proud of. Um, so you talked about MOOCs, these yeah. massively open online courses. Um, they're fine, I, I like them. Um, yeah, I mean, MIT, I, I can go as just uh, not an MIT alum, but I can go online, absolutely. I can, I can do, do MIT MOOCs, so. A absolutely, yeah. and if all you want to do is learn, yeah. you can learn for free. Yeah. Um, if you want to be certified as knowing some topic, there's a modest fee that you pay for that and so on. Um, what I think is more maybe interesting around uh, the digital and online world for education um, is not creating an almost as good experience at a lower price, but adding to the experiences. That's really been, I would say, more our focus at MIT and at the Sloan School um, is to do some new things. So if I can give you just one little example of that. Um, look at developing people as entrepreneurs. So we have a massively open online course introducing people to entrepreneurship. We have our faculty, we have some of our prominent alumni who lead that course. That's got about 50,000 people who take it uh, as a course for free. Some number of people would take the test to see how well they're doing. Um, we approached a subset of those people who did extraordinarily well in the course and asked them to talk about their entrepreneurial experiences. And out of the very best answers of that, from that original sort of group of 50,000 people, we came down to about 60 people that we said, we really need to bring these people on campus at MIT. And we did. And these are already successful entrepreneurs that we had not engaged with at all before this online experience. And they've now been wave one of an entrepreneur's network that we're creating out of people that initially came through the online door. So how do you do things in yes online that aren't only videotaping someone, uh, showing it to people, and then maybe giving them a test. I love that example. It's not, as they say, paving the cow path. That's not what MOOCs are about. Yeah. It's about finding new innovation yes. and new business models. Yeah. And actually, you know, it's a, a, one other example of that uh, from non-degree executive education. Um, so we have had, as I mentioned, some weather challenges in Boston on occasion. Um, in one setting, we knew that people were not going to be able to uh, get physically to campus to participate in a big data online course. And so over a very short time frame, we recreated that program so that you could be there in person or you could participate electronically and everyone in person or electronic had an avatar. And so if you think about the potential to gamify some elements of executive education, if you're sitting there in the room and you're listening to the faculty member, you're engaging at the same time with a couple hundred people around the world uh, whose profiles are right there in front of you. And some of the most powerful experiences that people said in person that they had during that executive program was with people who weren't there at all. And so the, in some ways, the avatar to avatar connections were stronger than the people to people connections. I hope that's not just the truth of MIT, but uh, we need to learn what, what the possibilities are to do more and to do different. Yeah, it's an added dimension of communications that, that you're bringing up. So uh, Dave, set up the day for us here. What, what can yeah. we expect? Yeah, uh, so uh, we have, uh, the uh, co-directors of the Initiative for Digital Economy here, as you know, um, Andy McAfee and Eric Brynjolfsson. Uh, we have other leading faculty who are uh, uh, visitors and perma me permanent members of our community uh, be talking about some of the huge changes uh, uh, in the world uh, as a result of digitization. Uh, Roberto Rigobon is going to be here. Um, he's the person who has told the truth about uh, inflation rates in some parts of the world where the governments work very hard to make sure nobody knows what inflation looks like. Um, as you may know, he uses online prices to be able to um, know day by day, item by item, what's going on with the um, institutional environment, the macro environment in over 100 countries around the world. It's quite extraordinary. So. Uh, we have people who are really leading 
for uh, new kinds of applications of big data and, um, and, and digital experiences. We also have people who are quite interested in the social impact of the digital economy, what it means for um, not only business opportunity, which is great, but what it means for economies, for societies, and um, how some of the policy choices that are going to need to be made over the next few years are going to be hugely important. So digital business, obviously, big theme, and it's something that's a huge opportunity for us, as, we, as we've heard uh, from, from Andy and Eric. How are you evolving education uh, yeah. to accommodate you know, the future of digital business? Yeah, uh, so you know, it, if you think about one of the big themes in management education re recently, it's been global experience. Having people get out of the classroom, uh, get to Vietnam, uh, get to Kuala Lumpur, uh, get to Colombia, for instance, um, and engage with entrepreneurial firms in real uh, project settings. Um, what does online, what does digital do for that? So how do you give a sliver of the experience that an MBA student is having in Vietnam to some of their classmates? How do you crowdsource in real time some ideas that they can bring to the table in those kinds of experiential learning settings? Again, some of the best of the ways that, um, that digital and online are affecting education aren't as a substitute, but they're as a supplement. To what, uh, to what we would typically do. So, of course, you know, things like accounting courses and uh, introduction, uh, introduction to finance, some of that material is going to the web, that's all great. But ways to take some of the special sauce from an MIT Sloan education and make it even better uh, through digital is, is a huge focus for us. And of course, the knowledge about the digital economy's future, uh, that's in the curriculum as well. So those are some of the innovations that, you, that you're working on. What, what yeah. else can we expect from the Sloan School of Management in this regard sort of going forward? Uh, so uh, we are deeply engaged around the world with partner institutions. One of the ways that uh, technology will have an impact is in how we work with them. So we've been deeply involved in China for 20 years now in helping change the landscape of management education in that country through the leading institutions, the leading business schools who are our partners in that effort. We've done that in uh, Korea. We'll be announcing uh, tomorrow uh, some activity in Malaysia that I'm not supposed to talk about. Um, and so uh, in Turkey, in Portugal, and so on. So in those partnerships, uh, the use of technology as a way to bring faculty together, to bring students together, um, is hugely important. And uh, that's also something that's been changing very rapidly over the last couple of years. So you'll see more of that. Well, Dave, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and having My us pleasure. here. It's, it's our pleasure to really collaborate with, with MIT and, and use theCUBE to bring your content to our audiences. It's been, a, it's been an excellent collaboration over the last several years, so thanks for having us and thanks for coming on. Uh, please keep coming back. All right. All right. Okay, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE. We're live from MIT IDE in London. We'll be right back. <laughs>